You know what I love, boys and girls? I love a good 4D chess move. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, this might sound a little conspiracy ridden, okay? This might, we might be delving into areas that may make me look more crazier than I usually am. God, I love Deus Ex. It's such a, it's such a great game. Like, on, I've been, I've been playing it for the last two, three days, and it's just, it's so great. Like, God, it's the perfect game. If you don't like Deus Ex, you're a fucking communist, in my opinion. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, without being, uh, without, 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 without even delving off of that, you know, this is one of those situations where I've sort of been pondering conspiracies. And I don't know if it's Deus Ex injecting conspiracies into me, but man, I can't believe I'm saying this, but bro, I, I think, I think I want to be sued because of this Copa shit. I think I do. I think I really want a fucking lawsuit. I think, I think this needs to happen, boys and girls. I'm, I'm actually excited for next month now you might be wondering Muto what kind of fentanyl deposit did you get into and you know what that's a video for another time what I want to talk about is calling the bluff of potentially having YouTube now over the past couple days one of the things that obviously we all have on our mind is is how fucked next month is going to be right like next month is going to be an interesting month, right? And, and everyone sort of calmed it down. I've tr I've calmed it down, but it's always, you know, in the in the back of the mind, right? Now, I'm not too terribly worried about it, but reading it over and over and over again has made me realize that, man, I don't know if YouTube realized this, but could they have shot themselves in the foot? Has Google shot themselves in the fucking foot pretty hard? Now, let me get into this real quick. One of the things that has basically been pestering me on every upload that I make is YouTube keeps asking, you know, in the little section, make sure you have uh, allocated your video for kid friendly or not. Now, I basically set my channel to not kid friendly, but if you're a YouTube uploader, you'll notice that, like, there's a big fucking, like, stinking selection every time, you know, in the new studio upload or whatever they call it. And, you know, you set it to none. But one of the interesting pieces of dialogue that YouTube has sort of offered and it's not rescinded yet is that they're using machine learning to assist finding videos that are for kids or not for kids. Now, I've talked about this in the past when it comes to this situation. If fines like this were to ever occur, there would need to be a manual revision. And so far, YouTube has a pretty decent uh, form of manual like intervention when it comes to videos. You know, I think a lot about DMCA strikes, right? Like people who file like false DMCA strikes, you can't blame YouTube for them. You can only blame the person filing them because a DMCA strike could happen to any website. You know, you could file one and send it to Twitch. You could file one and send it to Mixer. Everyone has to act that moment, you know, to, to, to shit on YouTube for the DMCA claim problem isn't really that, you know, targeted to them. The reality is if somebody gets served papers, that website has to absolutely get rid of the content that is offensive. Now, of course, you get into things like litigation where, yeah, you know, our content isn't violating fair use or, 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 is, or, is it, or is violating it. You know, you get into all of that. YouTube has a forum for you to fight against it. And if you genuinely feel that you are safe against it, yeah, of counterclaim, do what you can. But uh, when you get into the DMCA territory, you're actually getting into like legal uh, lawsuit territory. So it's obviously sketchy no matter where you're on, okay? And for a lot of these US-based services where DMCA, you know, law is, is literally what they operate under, they have to respond to it in any capacity. Now with this uh, new guideline that's coming out, everyone's affected. You know, I, I feel weird when people are like singling out YouTube in this when uh, you, do, you do realize Twitch also falls under it. You know, you do Mixer also falls under it. You know, fucking... I'm pretty sure like adult websites even fall under it, even though you know that they're an obvious exception, but you get the point. Any US streaming service fucking falls under it, okay? Disney Plus falls under that shit. Every streaming service or, or anything falls under it. Any operator of media content falls under that bullshit. But one of the things that YouTube has done and nobody else has talked about is using machine learning to assist the FTC. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't seen anybody even talk about this but YouTube. So YouTube has obviously been under the limelight. They've got that settlement deal that they made. They've basically said that, you know what, in addition to the FTC, I think manually checking these, they're going to provide machine learning tools to look through it. Now, one of the realities of this is YouTube's machine learning is pretty much prevalent in everything, okay? We've always talked about it, but I feel like I make this video because I have sort of, you know, my knowledge given to it because when it comes to machine learning and artificial intelligence I have a lot to talk about and when it comes to Google this is gonna get really nerdy when it comes to Google as a company you know Google is the company that is the AI front leader in my opinion right like Google is a company that has acquired services like DeepMind and through this Alphabet as its whole every service that Google offers gives a form of a uh, 
of what I'd like to call artificial intelligence. No matter what you're doing on Google, whether it's checking email, whether it's checking your news, whether it's checking whatever, it's all powered by this artificial intelligence that Alphabet is creating every single day. You know, it, it's weird when you sign on to your Google account on your phone, right? And you look at the news and it always caters it to you. You know, you go to your Gmail, it always caters things to you. You know, Google has this really weird artificial intelligence that is almost reaching like the sentience category. And it's no doubt that they're uh, the fucking front competition for everyone around them. Whether you're Facebook, whether you're Apple, whether you're Microsoft, whether you're actually the United States Army, you're always looking at Google and like how far they're pushing artificial intelligence. YouTube as a whole is mostly managed by artificial intelligence. That means things like Content ID, things like DMCA sometimes. Uh, a lot of these situations on YouTube, a lot of the stuff that happens is, is, is algorithmic. And we've always talked about it. Everything is delivered in a form of algorithms, whether they be ads, whether they be content, whether they be your recommendations. There's actually very little human oversight on this website to begin with. It's such a big website that you expect it to be run by artificial intelligence. Anybody that says that it shouldn't be, I think it's a little naive, okay? This is, it's, a, it's a big website. It's one of the top five biggest websites. It's going to be run by AIs. But this is the thing. When you have this new, uh, you know, COPA bullshit implemented and it's all fed by artificial... It's, it's all assisted with machine learning algorithms that Google has created for this specific purpose, then I think it can backfire on them a lot that they're assisting a federal government. Now, let me get into this real quick. If you get fined by the FTC for $42,000, I don't think anybody's going to pay for it. There, there are two scenarios that play out over here. Either you pay a $42,000 fine to the FTC or you go to the uh, or you go to the courts and say, hey, look at the Eighth Amendment, okay? There's, there's an actual uh, issue that pro prohibits the federal government from imposing excessive fines, bails, or cruel and unusual punishments. And I've always said this, you know, for a video that could make $400, a $42,000 fine on every video doesn't exactly you know, coincide as a fair fine. It's quite excessive. So chances are people will take this to a court. Now, there are many ways that this plays out, I think. If you go to a court and what happens is they say, yeah, you shouldn't be paying that fine. You should get it dramatically limited. Maybe that'll happen. But I think one of the weirdest things that could happen, the biggest backfires, is if any defense, you know, attorney here actually asks what algorithm was used, how this algorithm was presented in order to gauge, you know, because at the end of the day, what has to happen is a manual check. And let's say, for example, somebody makes a blatantly not for kids video and the FTC flags it and finds it. Maybe it'll happen. It might. You never know. But let's say that the video in question that they've picked out manually was assisted by Google's uh, machine learning algorithms and courts find out that it obviously wasn't. It wasn't a kid friendly video. You know, let's say it even reaches that point. Then I think at some point, Google's artificial intelligence or whatever they use for this section needs to come into the limelight. It absolutely has to. Now, I believe in a court, YouTube and Google can fight against the federal government and say, we'll do whatever we can not to show our code, not to show our machine learning algorithms. But at some point, you're fighting a battle of attrition against the U.S. government. You're not going to fucking win. So at some point, you're going to have to come up and show them the code that you've used. Now, what takes me to this scenario is, you know, you look at things like poaching in the tech industry, right? And this is a big, big deal. I'll give, you know, quick examples of it too, because I feel like I'm going to go on a billion tangents. You know, when you look at Sony, right, buying Hideo Kojima, they didn't buy the rights to a game like Death Stranding necessarily. I mean, they did uh, for a while. What they got most importantly out of it was a game engine. If you go back in time to like when Hideo Kojima left Konami, when Metal Gear Solid 5 was releasing, he had developed an engine called the Fox Engine, a set of code that basically was used to power his game, and it looked quite good. It was on the cutting edge of video game engines at the time. See, by Sony basically poaching Hideo Kojima, he had poached not just Hideo Kojima, but the entire team necessarily at Kojima Productions at the time. And with that, ironically, they ended up buying the Fox engine somewhat. I mean, could Konami take them to court? Sure, but you can't necessarily get away with that lawsuit, especially when these big, big guys are involved. And at that point, you basically poach not just a game, not just a developer, but the underlying engine tech that you've now put into your first party software through Guerrilla Games. So that's just a quick and dirty example. If you go to the tech industry, every time uh, somebody leaves a pretty cushiony job from one of the big tech sectors, it's very quickly that they'll end up getting a new job. And you can look at LinkedIn profiles. They end up getting a new job at like Microsoft, at like Apple, at like whatever. Because at the end of the day, they're not just hiring the person, they're hiring the intelligence that they have seen throughout time. And yes, you might understand there are, you know, non-competition -com clauses, there's a bunch of ways that you can prevent people from stealing your code. But at the end of the day, if somebody has looked at your code, if somebody has worked on your code, 
then it's going to take a hell of a lawsuit for you to prevent that code from ever leaking to someplace else if that person goes to work somewhere else. You get what I'm trying to say? So if you go back to the lawsuit uh, ideal and you go back to the fact that this algorithm will have to at one point be mentioned publicly in a courtroom, there are many scenarios that can play out. YouTube will themselves make it public that this is how their algorithm works. This is how their AI works. Or they end up hiring, you know, a third party. You know, let's say you're 50 developers, 50 programmers that are able to look at this code and absolutely ascertain it and describe it to a courtroom. Well, those 50 people can look at your court, describe it, and whatever that case goes, goes. But what's the scariest thing for YouTube and Google that we can play the bluff on is let's say these 50 people look at this code, no matter what contract they sign, we know the world we live in. There's going to be people from Amazon, people from Facebook, people from Microsoft. Every competitor Google has will line up to poach all of those 50 people they can because it'll give them a chance to look at how Google operates, how their competition works. You know, even if this is just a COPA relegated AI that they'll be looking at, it still gives an insight to how the trade secrets of Google works. So I think with Google and YouTube basically signing this settlement, they're banking on the idea that people are just going to get fined or they're going to get thrown out of court. I don't think any Google executive has ever really questioned the thought that if this goes to a high enough court and they're forced to base or they're subpoenaed to basically give how this algorithm they're using to assist works so that people can analyze it, people can make a legal case out of it. I don't think anybody at Google has actually thought of that situation outright. And I feel like if I was a Google executive, if I worked at this company, if I worked at YouTube, and it turns out that maybe the code that we have kept a trade secret to this day could potentially be leaked out in front of all these people, could potentially be forced to be given out, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of whatever, it could cost us billions of dollars, could cost us entire contracts if we had to. Ladies and gentlemen, I actually kind of want to see a lawsuit kick out. I really do. Because, you know, money and, and these fines, fines are all relative, right? For me and you, $42,000, you know, that's a pretty heavy chunk of change. For Google, that's really not. But for Google, even $100 million sometimes maybe isn't that big of a chunk of change. But potentially, and of course, this requires a lot of conspiracies, to give up your trade secrets? Fuck that! <laughs> I mean, you're signing a goddamn death warrant, dude! What the fuck? <laughs> this COPA stuff has basically proven to be somewhat of an issue to, I guess, towards YouTube. And because regardless of what the FTC says, regardless of what YouTube says, if machine learning is used to assist and, and basically fine individuals legally, you know, we're talking like jail time shit. We're talking an actual potential criminal issue, then regardless of whatever tool you're using, you cannot expect to say, hey, we're using an algorithm, but we're not going to tell you how the algorithm works in court. No, 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 no. You have to describe how it works. You have to have people look at the nitty gritty and say, this is how we isolated this content as child friendly. And once you have the internal guts looked at by third parties or whatever, that shit's going to get poached, man. That shit's going to get taken. Whatever advantages Google has in any capacity, whether it be video, which is one of the most important fields right now in the world, you know, may, may, maybe, may, maybe, maybe it might lead to some bigger troubles for YouTube, Google going on forward. And I don't think anybody has thought that far. And, and maybe it can't be done. You know, like I said, this is just big conspiracy theories, but it's been on my mind for the last few days. And I feel like I kind of have to get it out. It feels like if it works out this way, I do want to see it work out this way. Because for years, YouTubers and content creators have not had any stance against Google YouTube. We kind of we kind of have to eat the shit that this website offers. And you know what? Ultimately, it's a symbiotic relationship, right? YouTube would not be successful without curated content creators that keep funneling traffic to this website. And those content creators wouldn't be here without YouTube's partner program. So it's a symbiotic relationship. But eventually, when YouTube feels like it has all the cards, I feel like, in a way, that they've finally given the biggest card to its content creators. And I feel like for content creators scared of next month, listen, if it turns out to be a big legal shit show, which it may then you know what? Let it be a big legal shit show. Because at the end of the day, our legal shit show will be very tiny in comparison to the issues that YouTube and Google may have. And if if it works that way, I don't think anybody's going to act on those issues. I don't think anybody's going to assist on it. Because let me tell you about the world. Me and you can't change it. But these corporations that own, what, 90 plus percent of the world? Yeah, if you scare them enough, they're not going to do shit. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. That being said, though, uh, I think that's really all I have to say. You know, that's really all I have to get down to. Again, you know, could I, could I, could it, could it be a total conspiracy? You know, could I, could I be putting on the tinfoil hat for sure? 
But I feel like it's something that could definitely, definitely occur. And it's something I want to see occur. That being said, the ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.